Yes, it is Jim Drew. He has a, the four o'clock presentation, and he will be talking about FPGA Arcade. And tell us all about it. Maybe you can give a plug for Supercar Pro that is in our raffle today. So uh, go ahead, Jim. Howdy, howdy. I'm Jim Drew. I've been here. It's my third Convex now, and um, I came from the '80s. Back with most of you, I guess. Um, I was here. <laughs> oh wow! I was here last year, and I introduced uh, Supercar Pro, which is a disc copier that I made. And so, over a year now, and hundreds of units later, we're still going strong, and it's doing great. But I've taken an interest in uh, FPGA programming. So I kind of got on board with these guys that um, make a device called the FPGA Arcade Replay. And it's a board that Mike Johnson actually started uh, in 2011. I think that's when the first one was actually done. And it uses an FPGA chip for doing emulation of CPUs and custom chipsets and such. And a lot of people don't understand the difference between an FPGA and a regular CPU. CPUs are sequentially um, access device so that you have instructions that run one after the other. An FPGA is not the same. An FPGA can be thought of as, let's say, something like this where we've got about 70,000 LEs, they call them, which means you've got 70,000 CPUs all running at the exact same time. So each one does a particular step, and so they're parallel processed. So you have different blocks of, of code space, basically, uh, that are doing different functions, and all those occur at the exact same time. So if you've got an operation that requires that you wait on some other operation, that's one of the phases that will go through. It'll sit and wait for something else to occur. But you have parallel processing for everything, which is why you can take a device that's a 50 megahertz device and you can emulate something that's super fast, way faster than the original, by a long shot. So the, the board I've got here, the FPG Arcade Replay board, it's about uh, eight inch by, I think it's four and a half inch, so it's a board about like this. I've got it in a uh, ATX case, kind of like copying Dave's over there. Um, same kind of case, uh, power supply built in and such. And the advantage of that is it gives you an, uh, an opportunity to uh, put it in something to hold it in place. Uh, Mike has made a back plate for an um, um, ATX case so that you've got um, your two joystick ports, a PS2 mouse port, a PS2 keyboard port, um, you've got a DVI um, video output, and uh, you can use DVI to VGA adapter if you want to, to go to a VGA monitor. This is a DVI monitor I've got here. And um, it's just basically a menu based system, what's called an OSD, on screen display. So when you boot the device, you see this, and if you hit the F12 key, you're gonna see basically the on-screen display, it's an overlay, and it gives you an opportunity to pop up a menu um, for your different cores. And the cores are actual replacement for the FPGA uh, architecture. Back in the day when we had, um, anybody remember the thing called the Video Toaster? Yes. Yeah. Video Toaster had what's called a Xilinx chip on it. It was one of the first type of FPGA setups and we have to load the software onto it. Most of the Xilinx back in the day were hard-coded, one-time use only, so you burn it and that's what it's on there, and it loads off its internal memory. All of the FPGAs now, they're loaded externally. So there's actually an ARM processor on this board, it's a high-speed ARM, that handles the SD uh, media card that's also plugged in the back of this. The SD media card is a traditional, you know, uh, fat file system, so you can put all your files on there. So you're gonna get, uh, A directory just like you have any kind of a directory and these are all the different cores that I've got in here right now. Uh, there's a bunch of experimental cores that are being done by various people and any kind of FPGA uh, game or utility or whatever device that's out there currently can be adapted to the replay board really easily because what um, Mike and Wolfgang working together on this did, they actually have um, a HAL which is a hardware extraction layer so you can do things like have video, very simple by using this, uh, a tag on for the video. You can use the audio, you can use um, the OSD, the keyboard interface, the mouse interface, basically they're all tags and you can actually tag into that with your FPGA. So basically for creating a game or something, 
you just have to really make the, the center core of what the game is doing, and you can go use their video, go use the keyboard, go use the joystick, and so it makes it very simple for somebody to port something to FPGA. All right, so let's take a look at some of the cores we've got. Um, Wolfgang is a German guy, and he is really big into arcade games. So what Wolfgang likes to do. Where do you get a monitor that can do that? This is an HP uh, 2440W. They're 299 bucks. I have three of them I can, at my desk, and this is actually one of them. So you'll notice that uh, if you've ever seen this before, this actually is Galaga <laughs> from the arcade. And it uses the um, actual ROM from the machine and emulates every piece of hardware exactly like the machine does. So you can play the game just like everything else. And the neat thing too is we have access in here, most guys, of course it's hard to see here, uh, but you can change your scan ratios. Um, you can change a lot of different settings, uh, kind of like your dip switches in the arcade machine. You can extend them all from here. Here's all the dip switches from the original arcade machine. So you can change all those. Uh, let's go to a different game here. You know what's hard to do the sideways than you think it is? Okay. I'll cover a couple more here that somebody might recognize this game as well. This is Phoenix. Oh, yeah. And because it uses the actual ROM from the original machine, it's 100% identical. I mean, the video is identical. Everything, even down to the little quirks that got problems, they're identical. Do it. Uh, I think there's another one in here that Wolfgang did. Like I said, he's a real big stand-up guy. And right now, he's doing all of the Williams games. Oh. So Joust, Defender, uh, Robotron, you know, and uh, what else? The other ones that are in there. Uh, Stargate, and all the whole series back in the day. Jim, what is Wolfgang's last name? Sheer. Okay. Yeah. It's S H E um, S S C H E R R. Okay. Let me put this back so I can read everything. Okay. So besides um, having video games, which is what Wolfgang's really into, um, they're also really into doing computer emulation. Now, the reason why that this has taken forever, um, literally, it's this board I've got it here. It's got a copyright of 2011 on it is that um, these guys are really meticulous about doing exact emulation of chipsets. So Mike's day job, I guess, is uh, doing engineering of chips and researching components, and that's what he does. He travels all over the world doing this. So they took the SID chip and all the different revisions of the SID chip, and they did a die layer extraction. Basically, you slice it all the way down to the analog layer, and um, then you x-ray it and then you look at all the microcells and you emulate it exactly. So that's how they did the SID chip. Uh, the VIC chip is done the same way. Uh, on the Amiga chips, they've done the exact same way for the Amiga emulation. So it takes a long time to do that. But the end result is that you get an exact emulation of it. So they have the ability with the 64 emulation to actually use any of the different types of SIDs Recognize that coke. <laughs> so in here you can change your different settings. Um, there's the ability to, to load uh, D64s, and you can load a program file directly into RAM. Those G64 support coming, and then there's also flux image support coming, so you can do copy protected disks exactly like the original. There's a 1541 emulation that are in here. Um, it's identical, it's cycle exact to a real 1541. So it's kind of like how the 1541 Ultimate 2 is, but it's built in and you use the image files off of the, the card for that. Uh, let's see. Set your scan lines, you can see that we can, we're changing how the scan lines are. So if you want to make it kind of like the original, that's how it is. I don't like it so much that way. Um, let's go load the program. Uh, what's in here? Tests. Oh, we don't care about those. These are all diagnostics tests we did.
sure where I put my files. Okay. There we go. So if you want to load like the 1541 test demo disk, I mean these are all G64s. You can put any kind of thing you want in here. And it's mapped to um, the keyboard. We can change the keyboard mapping. So we'll make it identical to Tumblr key mapping if you want. Figure out which is which here. All right, let this load. Uh, supports Jiffy DOS and everything else because it's identical emulation. got a VIC-20 emulation as well, what Wolfgang did, so it's identical to VIC-64 emulation. There's an Amiga emulation, there's an Atari 800 emulation, uh, ColecoVision, with like every cart known to mankind I've got. Um, there's a SpectraVision, do we remember what that was at all? SpectraVision, they used a kind of a mirror thing to, to bounce a LED off of a kind of a mirror that was spinning type of thing. Wow. They emulate that. <laughs> Um, basically anything you can possibly think of, we could do with FPGA Arcade. Uh, yes? Jim, on Amiga, how far up on the ladder does it go for OS on Amiga? 1.3, 2.04, 3.04? Uh, we're right at 3.9. Oh, you're, you're on 3.9? Yeah, we're at 3.9. It's a full AGA emulation. So it'll do, it's basically it's an Amiga 1200 hmm. on steroids because it's quite a bit faster than a 1200 is. <laughs> can you do a sysinfo on it? Yeah. Oh boy. So, I, <laughs> I have no idea what this is really, but this is one of the demos that uh, we had for this thing. I don't think it's. Do you know anything about this at all? No. Okay, fine. Anyway, so I guess it's got all the same stuff that you could possibly do. Uh, the board itself has a 24-bit DAC on it, and you can emulate all the different analog uh, stuff that the SID can do, which was something that uh, they spent quite a bit of time learning how to do. So, anybody recognize this at all? Uh, yeah. So, um, I broke the cardinal rule before I left. <laughs> Mike, Mike gave me a brand new version, and uh, <laughs> it's... Oh. <laughs> It's horribly buggy oh. when it comes to hard drive stuff. Sometimes it just hangs okay. um, because they enabled write for the first time, really having write capability. But um, just like everything else with the OSD, you can select uh, your chipset, what type of chipset you want to, CPU, cache you on and off, uh, what chipset you're actually going to run, AGA, ECS, all that, uh, what processor, regular 020 or EC like in the 1200, your RAM, um, external RAM. 48 megs of extra memory if you want, or like have fast memory that's just 8 megs, so I got set right now. Uh, how many floppy drives? The speed of the floppy, you can make it super duper fast, so <laughs> instant loading, or you can make it load like a real one. Um, you can do scanline frequency changing, and obviously this monitor's not going to be too happy about it. It'll do um, SD versus HD for output. On everything that will on um, FPGA Arcade will do that way. Um, let's see. On uh, Floppies, you can actually mount a floppy. So if you want to do like, this is kind of funny, I actually did my old super card, um, Amy. So I just mounted that floppy drive. So it's like the Amy docks. So that's how you select your floppies. And your hard drive is selected the same way. You can actually set your uh, master and slave uh, for your, because it emulates an IDE hardware exactly like the 1200 has and the 4000. So you can select your files you have for that. You can switch hard drives if you want to. You need to reboot, of course. Yeah? Is, is, is it possible to speed it up any to where you get faster emulation of the IDE? Yeah. Yeah, you can, it, you can go as fast as it, well, the ID goes as fast as you want to go. Oh, okay. So yeah, because like I'm, limited. like with this, and this is the stripped down version, so the caches are off on the FPGA. Everything is like in debug mode for it. And the transfer rates, I ran, um, disk speed 3.1, so I was looking at like small block sizes. Typically like on a Super Drive, I remember back in the day with the Supra, that program would show me like 
11k a second for like a 512 block and it's like 90k a second like that right now so it's quite a bit different yeah it, the transfer speed through uh, sysinfo is like 580k a second across it and remember this is coming off an sd card too so which isn't like super duper fast anyway so it's it's pretty speedy for for what it's doing okay why well, do have sound and let's see This was a this is a master sound demo that came with a little interface so you could do recording on it. So that's something that's we for testing. Um, I mean, it's pretty quick considering the fact that there's no uh, caches turned on. The version with the caches turned on gives us about I don't know, it's uh, 60, 70 megahertz of 30 speed, which is great compared to. Like this right now, I think is showing. Let's see. Uh, where is the copy? Let me do this. And which um, which chip is implemented as far as emulation for the CPU goes? Is it like an O20 and O30? O20. Yeah, ECO20. I actually have this right now for for ECS uh, Denise, and you do like a speed test. And this is no caching in the FPGA, no nothing. So this is straight conversion of it. So that shows you the speed of it right now. So it's uh, 2.13 times faster than the stock O20 um, 1200 is right now. So it's quite a bit faster when we have the cache just turned on. And I don't know if it'll, the drives will, this is where I ran into the problem the other day. Let's see if it'll do a speed test without crashing. If you're using the older system for uh this is 323 or 321? The newest one is Sys uh, 4.0. Right, that's something that I, I read somewhere that somebody actually got Nick to cop up the code. Nick Wilson, who wrote it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah 542, 741 for bytes per second on the transfer. So that's pretty quick for you know, an SD media card in general. And this is a standard, I think it's a class 3 or class 4 card I got on here too. I noticed it's quite a bit faster you run like a class 10 card. So. Um, but it's identical to you know everything you could ever want to do in an Amiga. It runs all the different software that's O20 compatible. Um, I don't know if they're going to do O30, O40, or O60 core. Mike has a daughter board for this product, and it's an O60 daughter card. So it actually attaches to the top side of the mm -hmm. FPG arcade, and it gives you an O60 and RAM on it, and it also gives you an Ethernet port oh. and um, two USB ports as well. Hmm. So that's a product that he's getting ready to release because this whole thing is going to get ready to release shortly. So I'm the US distributor for this product and so I've been waiting for Mike for <laughs> a year now basically and helping him as much as I can with learning FPGA programming so we can get all this stuff done. Um, but like I said there's a, a lot of different cores that are out there and people are uploading cores to the site um, all the time for checking for preliminary. There's Atari 2600 core. Uh, if you're a ColecoVision fan, literally it's it's done. You did like, most all the cores are actually finished and work perfect. Some of them are kind of are testing still. I don't have your uh, Star Trek game. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Darn. But, but I do have Galaxian and things like that. Okay. I mean, so it basically in the kind of a cart image you've got, you can actually run all the binaries for it. So, so that's FPG Arcade. Any questions on it other than you know? It's, yes. Is this something you can buy? Like yeah, it's going to be a, it's a board. And Sorry, yeah, it's two ninety nine retail. That's what the retail price is going to be for the, for the cart. When? Uh, Whenever. As, yeah, as soon as Mike gets the. So like I said, Mike has actually an inventory of boards since oh. two thousand eleven sitting there but doesn't want to release them until the Amiga's done. Mike's two thing goals were really was the Amiga and the Atari ST, because that's what he wanted to make it for originally with an ST emulation. Greg. Is it open yes. source yes. or open, what's, what's yeah, open? open what's, what's, everything's open. Yep. Cool. Yeah, so you can get the, um, the OSD information for all this stuff, and there's complete SDK available for it. So you can actually develop your own, and of course Mike and Wolfgang are on the forum all the time, and so. What about, what about the hardware aspects of the different devices? Are they, are they 
Yeah, it's all open. There's full schematics even. But I mean, like, uh, say there's no user port. As far as the plugin, yeah, the, the, if you take a look at the schematics, it shows you all the different connectors that are on there. And there's a, actually an expansion port, which is where the daughter board plugs into. So plug yeah, yeah, so there's headers. There's USB um, on the board as well already. And there's an internal USB header that you can actually plug into. And so they can do that. Uh, there's, like I said, take a look at the, it's fpgarcade.com. If you take a look at that, you'll see there's uh, documentation, there's full schematics, there's, I mean, there's everything there. It's, there's no secrets to anything at all. You can take a look at how it all works. If you've got questions about implementing it, um, Mike and Wolfgang are there all the time, and they can help you do all that. So typically in a 1541 disk drive, there's 2K of RAM at zero page, and then there's mirrors throughout memory, and then there's two VIAs, and they're also mirrored throughout memory. And then you've got your two ROM, ROMs, and those are also mirrored from 8,000 to C1,000, and the ROMs sit from C to, to Quad F normally. So this has all the memory mapping for all that. So it looks identical. Plus, I also have got 2K of ROM and 8K of RAM that for my supercard board if you want to enable it. So you can turn it on and off. Yeah? What is the name of this project again? It's called uh, Micro 1541, U1541. And this, little would, tiny. this would hook into? You can put this inside of your Commodore 64. OK. Or you can run it externally and plug it through an IEC cable. OK. And is this is this better than like SD to IEC? Yeah, because this is an actual 1541 disk drive. Okay. So it'll run anything that's copy protected. It'll run any kind of fast loader. It's identical to a real drive in all respects. Do you have those for sale? No, I just this is a prototype. I actually started just finishing right now. Is this going to be in competition against the 1541 Ultimate? Yes. Uh, also, I mean, 1541 kind of. I say yes, uh, but the drive portion of it. 1541 Ultimate obviously has a cartridge and it gives you an RU and all things like that. So there's a lot more going on with that product. But as far as driving emulation con is concerned, there's a lot of programs that don't run with the 1541 to Ultimate because of the driving emulation is not correct. Mm -hmm. Where this is correct. Mm -hmm. so, and I have uh, you know, a little bit of background with uh, the drive to know what should work and what shouldn't work and how things work. We have different quirks and you know, the BIA and such. So, but that's the entire board and I can make it half the size, but People didn't think it was like a big deal if I, because it's a single-sided board only. I could put, put things in the back side and make it half the size, but it's kind of small. So I was talking with Dave, and uh, I'm conning Dave into putting a header on the on his <laughs> board, so we could literally just plug this onto it, huh? and that way you'd have the ability just to plug it in, and now you got a disk drive inside. And so at that point, you can load it up with images of all your files, and um, you can play them just like it was a regular, you know, real disk drive at that point. How do you select a disk image? Through the display, actually they also got push buttons that are available on this. You can actually do push button for back and forth and you can see on the display what files loaded and all that. Um, I, I also, I can make an interface for the 64 where you can actually do a special you know, command string and get sent to it so it activates it in command mode. That way we can do a directory listing and select those files and select one that way. I was trying to stay away from all that because I really can't stand them, how the SD2 IC works. You've got to do backslash and all this stuff to get into directory levels. And, and it's not compatible with everything at that point. And I wanted to make it exactly like a real drive. So that's why I made the display capability. Is it possible um, to use Jiffy DOS with it? Yeah. yeah, you can use anything you want. In fact, uh, because it's got the uh, parallel port, and I'm, I'll get Dave to put a parallel port header in his board as well, we'll just run a ribbon cable, you know, female to female ribbon cable. Uh, you could run uh, ProDOS or Dolphin DOS as well. Because huh. all those are, are just a set of ROMs that are extra mapped to memory, and they are a lookup table for GCR to do it in real time. And that's how that all works. So it, it kind of replaces Jiffy DOS in general that way. So, um, Is there any possibility in the future of having it support, even if it's not full emulation, uh, like a D81 image so you can have larger space for things like Geos or something? Yeah, it's possible to support any of the disk drives. In fact, it's so fast on here as far as my processing time. I can probably support a couple drives at the same time, including a 1571 and 2 megahertz mode, and like the 1581. And I could make it um, <coughs> support uh, like the um, CMD hard drive to act like a hard drive. Similar to how like the SD to IEC does it, or, yeah, right. or at least for the Geo support. Right, it's kind exactly. of a main yep. thing for extra storage. Is sure. Or something like Geo, so something like yep. Would there be support like 
extra RAM, like RAM board would give? Yeah, SuperCard supports built in, yeah. And you can map it to 6,000 memory or 8,000 memory, which is what RAM board uses, mm -hmm. 8,000. So. so that's something I've been tinkering with for the last few weeks or so. ETA price uh, Yeah, I wanted to keep it around fifty dollars. Oh wow! Yeah. Good price. What's that? When do you think you'll have them available? Um, I don't know how long. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's, I'm still working on the coding for it and stuff. Um, I don't know. It's sometimes it happens you know, overnight. You know, sometimes it happens in months. So I don't know. That's the, What's holding you back? Just there's certain features. Time. Time. I, I'm really, really busy. I'm doing no, all I kinds of things. Like with that in particular, like, is there something not finished on it? Or? Uh, I'm doing some BIA coding right now. I'm uh, getting all the quirks worked out for it. I did all the op codes. Um, so I'm just kind of going through and cleaning everything up right now. So it works. Then I got to get boards made and all that. So, so I mean, it, getting boards made is pretty simple. So that's what I'm working on now. That's, uh, that's the next project after doing SuperCard. And um, uh, for the SuperCard, for <laughs> Software-wise, in the last year, I did a recovery for the Amiga, which works actually pretty phenomenal. I was surprised myself. Uh, I've got some disks for the Amiga that I can't read on the Amiga at all, but I was able to recover them just fine, 100% with SuperCard. Because uh, if you take a look at how a uh, disk works, you get um, clocking data, and if your clocking window shifts at all because of time and you know magnetic energy around or whatever, oh, they, he's plugging the product over there. Uh, the Amiga's clocking window is pretty wide, but it's not nearly as wide as you can do in a piece of hardware like that. So I'm able to have a very wide clocking window and recover all the data that gets lost. Um, I'm working on a thing right now for the 64, so 1541 disk I can do the same thing with. So we can recover those. Honestly, we were so lucky with the 1541s and all the five and a quarter inch media, we didn't have the fallout rate that three and a half inch disk did. And John and I were talking about this the other day. It's like, we don't understand it because other than the fact that it's a uh, different oxide material, a three and a half inch disc is protected. You know, it's in a case, covered, all that stuff. It should have fared much better. Mm -mm. Mm. It didn't. You typically, you'll see an Amiga disc, the last eight or nine tracks are always garbage. Huh. Wow. And they didn't fare well at all in time. But I've got discs from 1979 for my um, 8050s, the, the old pet drives, that work fine. No problem whatsoever. I've only had a handful of discs for the 1541 that were folded. It didn't work anymore, but I was able to recover some of those discs that were folded. Oh. Just lay them out, but heat gun, <laughs> or put them outside in Arizona where we live, and that works too. <laughs> so then they, they work fine. You can take them out of the jacket, you know, this is a raw piece of media, and kind of slide it into the 1541, you shut the lid down, and it's like, yeah, it still reads. So. I'm doing recovery for it, and then the recovery also will be for um, Atari ST and PC as well. But those don't need it so much. So that's it. Anything else? Any questions at all? That's all I'm working on right today. Anybody got any suggestions for anything for product-wise? Anybody want to make anything neat at all, or want to see something neat made? Like <laughs> If I wanted to say pull the guts out of one of my one of my old 1541s trash, I could throw one of those little cards in there, and it would look and feel and except without having to put a physical disc in there. Right. Yeah. In fact, what I ended up doing is making you see the little cutesy little cases for the SD2. I I'm probably do something like that where it makes it look a drive, and the and then the front end is where the card loads type of thing. I'll probably end up doing a case like that, but I think a lot of people will put them inside the computer. One thing I played with last year, and I may still end up doing it, is um, replacement for the 6510. You basically pull your 6510 and you put the board in, you put the 6510 back in place, and out the very edge of it is an SD media card slot, and it's got the same exact thing built into it, as well as got 512K of RAM for an REU emulation, wow. all inside of just that 6510. So you don't type your cartridge port at that point. So that's a possibility. For Dave's board, huh? <laughs> no, it's actually, yeah, Dave worked for Dave's board. I worked for Real64 okay. at that point. But I don't know if I'll do it. Yeah, I mean, static RAM, you don't need much. And then, yeah, it's a little tiny battery would work for it. But I don't know if I'll build it. It's just something that I was playing with. But this 1541 emulation, something I wanted to have, that's pretty typically what happens with me when I want something, I go and build it. Hmm. And then, yeah, she's got another head, you know. Because of everything he does. <laughs> 
like, I gotta have that. It's like, well, I can probably sell that too. The size is great though. Like this machine right here, I've got an SD to IEC built into it. Right. And so that would be nice because that's even more compatible. Yeah, yeah, 100% compatible yeah. at that point. And then you know, if you run on a parallel cable, then you can have an internal parallel cable and you can copy this in seven seconds. Not that it matters so much with you know internal, but right. you have the ability to do that. And but more importantly is that there's like guess there's a ton of um, demos out there that don't work with SD2 IEC because right. of the it's a kind of a custom fast loader. And this works just fine with anything. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. It's, it's you know serial coming off the IEC port. There's no difference. So. Anything else? Anybody? Anyone? Bueller? Well, that's it. That's all I gotta say. Thank you.